Everyone, you all look very beautiful this morning. I felt so awkward, but also so beautiful when I walked out the hotel room at nine o'clock in the morning <laughs> looking like this. <laughs> I'm sure you, you can relate. <laughs> um, I just want to thank everyone um, for welcoming me, for having me here this morning, for having me part of this conference, especially... Especially prophets and prophetess and this specific building, I cannot be thankful enough more. I, I'm not, if you know me, I'm not, I don't speak often, I don't speak a lot. Unless we are one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I can then have a, a, a decent conversation with you. Like, the questions of yesterday was amazing. It was all good questions. But I personally prefer to answer those type of questions more in a personal setting because I like to then, you know, speak a bit more about my experience and, and so on. But to express my gratitude towards prophet and prophetess, I just really hope and I pray that even though I don't always have the words to really fully express what they mean to me and what, how much they've impacted my life, I really hope that in the fruits, in my fruits that will show and they will also be honoured for that. But of course, to God be all the glory. And everything that I'm sharing with you today is to give God all the glory. Um, the reason why this church is so special to me is because this is where everything changed for me in my life. This is where the Spirit of God led me to become part of, to change, and to unlock my destiny. And... Um, I'm going to share a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit more deeper into my, a part of my testimony this morning that I felt that God really wanted me to share with you. Um, and I think it's a very special message. And I really, um, I'm excited for this because your hearts are going to change. I can promise you that. So, God is already doing work. He's already changing hearts. He's already beginning to restore even after last night, there's incredible feedback from the ladies. And I think the, the question, the Q&A was really powerful. Um, so just to, just to calm the nerves a little bit. The last time you saw me here was exactly a year ago. I think you might have seen three of me because I was three times the size I am now. <laughs> Um, I was pregnant at the time, and um, we had to wear white, so it made me even look <laughs> much bigger. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, something that we haven't really shared is while I was pregnant, um, I was 12 weeks pregnant with, with Joey, the youngest one, and um, we were at a Sunday service, and Pastor Stephen was preaching, it was at the, the evening service. And everything went well with my pregnancy. Really, I have had no complications at all with any of my pregnancies. Um, and towards the end of the service, Pastor Stefan called women and men, couples, married couples, who struggle to get pregnant. And as, that, as he called them up, I started bleeding. But I started bleeding, not just a little bit. I started bleeding like it was, I had to clean the toilets afterwards. It was really bad. It was a lot of bleeding. And um, I called Gail and Peter. I said, listen, let's just go to the, we have to go to the emergency room. We need to go and check this out. And um, long story short, uh, the doctor on duty actually told me I had a miscarriage. 
and that, you know, it's so early in the pregnancy, um, I can just take a, a, a tablet and then the fetus will, or the, whatever you call it, will dissolve and it will, it will be gone. And I said, you know, let's just leave it. I'm not, I'm not going to take that tablet. Thank God for my husband. <laughs> he carries me and he carries me well. He came there and he just, he just <laughs> ripped that doctor apart, okay? <laughs> he put him in his place. He was like, you have no authority to tell me that my child is lost and my child is dead. God gave me a promise. <laughs> Why would God give you a promise so clearly just to take it all away? And, I, and Pastor Stefan said, he told that, he literally told the doctor he's incompet incompetent. <laughs> um, I was, obviously, I was very emotional. As you can think, we were, women, we were also emotional beings. And, and the thought of, you know, I just had a miscarriage. And this can't be because it was so clear to Stefan and I that this child, every child, is a gift from God. And... Um, Long story short, she's seven months old. <laughs> okay. What I forgot to tell you is that right after that, I think it's about 20 weeks you go for the Down syndrome tests and things like that. And there again, the enemy wanted to try to intimidate, try to steal, and... Um, the doctor said, no, uh, it, looks, it looks like, for to them it looks like, according to the blood tests, according to the scans, she uh, might be Down syndrome. And uh, she's perfectly healthy, there's nothing wrong with her. Okay. So, my point is, well, I just wanted to stir up your faith a little bit, because, um, you know, many women go through situations like this, and many women, unfortunately, do, lost the, do, do lose the baby, but there's, there's hope, there's promise. And, um, you know, God uses a situation, a circumstance, a person to bring you closer to Him. Now, James 1 verse 17 says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And it comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no var variation, shadow of turning. Okay. So every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father. It comes down from the Father. Above comes down from the Father. So when you see anything good in someone's life, the Bible is very clear. Do not be confused as to where this is coming from. There is only one location where this is coming from, okay? But it doesn't say it comes from God. It says it comes from the Father, okay? So there is something about the nature and the character of God that is responsible for the good things in your life. And the majority of church and the majority of you and the views online as well, you don't have a revelation of God as your father. You only have a revelation maybe of him as the one who saved you or God as the creator. And Jesus came to demonstrate to us um, that God wants a personal relationship with us. Okay? He didn't just come to die for the world. He didn't... Um, he came to correct our perception about God. He came to demonstrate the fatherhood of God. Okay. Now, the scarcity of fatherhood in your life will always have the upper hand when it comes to your identity. Um, unless you gain a revelation of God who is your father. Okay. So many times we see people connect... Um, and relate to God 
um, according to the relationship they have with their, father, their natural father. So it might be through abuse or rejection, and it is natural, natural and by default that you would see God in that same light. Now, um, when children grow up without a father in, a, in, in the house, um, or let's just let's look at the positive. Okay, when they do, you will always see the, the following qualities on them. You'll see protection, security, provision, identity, and self-esteem. So when there is a lack of fatherhood in your life, you would lack those qualities. Now, growing up, my mother and my father got divorced when I was very young. Um, so I, my whole life, grew up with a lack of fatherhood in my life. Um, and that is one thing. That is really one thing to overcome. Many of you can, can agree with me. But it is another thing when you choose to reject your father. And that is what happened in my life. And that I want to share with you. So, um, through influence and through, yeah, let's just call it influence, um, and through a lack of identity because I didn't know who I was. Um, I always had women influence in my life. I have a, my mother, my two sisters, my grandmother. Every single boss that I've worked for was a woman. So I really, really struggled um, most of my life to submit under male authority. And obviously, because of a lack of fatherhood. I didn't have a father in the house. I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I grew up very religious. Um, I, I cannot even tell you we went to church every Sunday because we didn't. We went to a funeral and to a wedding and Christmas and Easter, you know. I didn't even know that you need to be in covenant with the church. I didn't even know that. I didn't know you can be a member of a church. I just thought you can just go to any church in your area when you feel like it. I didn't know what a dwemini was. I thought it was retired old men that <laughs> wants to take the mic and, and preach, you know. Um, so, <laughs> what I was going to say, um, I didn't have, bottom line is I didn't have any office that you have that you, sitting here. I didn't know of anything. I didn't know what anointing is. What is, what is, um, I didn't even know you get something like an evangelist <laughs> and a prophet. I really, honestly, I didn't know these things. Um, so I grew up religiously, but also not. I, don't, I still need to figure that out. Um, <laughs> um, but, um, after school, I really wanted to go study, and um, growing up in poverty, that's also, listen, I really struggled to figure out what testimony I should share with you, because I can share everything, but you're gonna, I'm going to keep you busy for the whole day, okay, but this specific one is where my life changed, so we grew up in, in, in poverty, um, I promise you, we ate millipop breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We made Christmas decorations from toilet rolls, empty toilet rolls. That's the only option we had. <laughs> okay, so um, my mother and I would walk with a bag of lingerie and salad from house to house. And people actually bought from us. It is incredible. Today, I can't even believe. I w like, imagine someone knocks on your door, wants to sell you lingerie, <laughs> and it's China Mall lingerie. <laughs> and you buy. People bought, people bought. Anyway, so I really wanted to go study. My mother couldn't help me. She couldn't, um, I couldn't get a bursary and she couldn't get me a study loan to um, go study. So I had to reach out to my father. Now, my father and I had a generally good relationship. Um, I didn't see him often. Distance was always a problem. So I would only maybe see him on uh, holidays, school holidays. Um, but as, as far as I was concerned, it was a fairly good relationship until the influence clouded 
my thoughts of my father. The words that I heard other people speak about my father um, really caused me to see him also in that same light, even though it wasn't true. So um, I had to take my father to court. Um, I had, for three years, I had to see him in court um, f- to be able to get my study loan or bursary. Um, so I had to sue my father. And from there on, I, my heart was so hardened against him uh, to, or towards him. Um, I really... I know you shouldn't... They say you shouldn't use the word hate. <laughs> Is that a religious thing? No. Okay. You shouldn't... <laughs> I really did. I honest, I honestly, I hated him. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want anything to do with him because of that, because of the shame that he put me through. Why must I see my father in, in court? You know, why must, I, why must I take you to court <laughs> in the first place? Why can you not just allow me to go study? But anyway, it was 11 years that I didn't speak with him or to him. Now, in that 11 years, I found... Oh, lack of identity was just the greatest, greatest drawback in my life. I would find my identity in boyfriends. I went clubbing. I even worked behind the bars. I don't know if that's too much to share, but that is true. It's my life. We are real. Um, and um, eventually I got married. I got married and it was rocky. I thought it was good. But it wasn't good. Um, As I said, I didn't know how to submit under male authority. So I never, um, you know, respected him in that sense and honored him in that sense. I didn't know of any better. I wasn't even saved. I thought I was saved. I was one of those, I know I am I'm a Christian. Why must I go to church? Why must I prove to everyone I'm a Christian? Why must I, you know, I pray in my heart. I, you know, I was one of those. I thought I was a Christian or I thought I was saved. I wasn't. Um, And uh, the divorce happened um, and came to a point in my life where I just needed help. I need a change. And sometimes, to me, it's, it's not all about the spiritual aspects. I didn't, when I want to change, it wasn't about, especially because I didn't know God, it wasn't about, um, God, now I need change. It was physically, I was like, okay, I'm, I know I look bad, I'm overweight, I feel bad. I need to do something. So I joined the gym. That was my first step to restoration. <laughs> okay. And, um, and, it, and that was where God met me because God sent me someone to the gym and he invited me to church and happily ever after. <laughs> okay. But my, what I want to, I just want to go off my story. But um, people would ask me, I would join the, the church. I, Letitia was my e-group leader. And um, she would ask me, and, and more people would ask me, but why do you not have a relationship with your father? What happened? And I got to a point where I literally couldn't, I couldn't give an answer. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I until today, I cannot tell you why I did it. There's no legit, legitimate excuse for me to have done what I've did against my father. And it, was, it wasn't until I joined the church and I gave my life to God where these, where I literally, light just came in and I, and I thought it's, it's as if Jesus took, just took all of those thoughts away and I literally couldn't remember anymore why I did it. Why did I do it? Um, why was I so horrible? Um, and it was the, before I get to that, two weeks ago, I phoned my father. Okay, so I'm going to 
basically give you the story away. My father and I have the best relationship now, okay? Right, but... The thing that I want to get to is I called my dad um, two weeks ago while I was preparing for this message. And I I asked him, Dad, don't you have that WhatsApp message that I sent you five years ago? Um, So what I did is... I literally decided to send him a message on WhatsApp. He didn't change his number for all these years. But I I took a chance. I sent a WhatsApp and I was like, okay, I need to get ready. Either he's not going to reply or he's going to reject me or he's going to be like, why now? Or he's going to have nasty words or I don't know. I just didn't know what to expect. And the response that I received from him completely blew me off my feet and unfortunately I don't have those messages anymore because I've changed phones and that's why I called my father and I asked him don't you have these messages for me I'd really just want to see it again I just want to I just want to be reminded of how you accepted me back after everything that I've done against you and said against you And he didn't have the WhatsApp messages anymore either. But he said to me, he can remember it. He can remember it so well. He said, I even wrote it in my diary. It's five years ago. Who keeps a diary for five years? (laughs) Okay. He didn't write the actual messages in there. But what he wrote down, and he sent me a screenshot, he said, NB. I'm going to say it in Afrikaans. Everyone understand Afrikaans? Okay. He said, in B, Jackie het my gekontak. Sy wil my ontmoet, sy wil vergewe en vergeet. Ek is baie blij. He wrote in, in his diary. <laughs> now, in that phone call, God really, really spoke to me. It was the first time after I reconciled my father that I expressed what it meant for me and how much it changed my life. It was the first time, and I didn't plan to do it. I really just wanted to know if he's got that WhatsApp message, and it just started coming out. And I started confessing. I said, Dad, you don't know what this means to me. It's the first time I'm telling you this, but you, this thing that happened between you and me really changed my life. It led me to God. It showed me who God the Father is. And, um, you know, God will... God will use your testimony. I said to prophetess, prophetess, I'm walking with this testimony for five years, but never ever have I seen it in the light that I've seen it right now. And so God, sometimes I think, when was the last time you called upon the Father and you break before Him and you humble yourself and you tell Him, Father, I'm so sorry that I have sinned against you. I'm so sorry for everything that I've done. You do not deserve the thing that I've done against you. Forgive me, I am broken. When was the last time? Because if you do that, he can reveal so much to you in that moment. So much about himself and so much about you and your life. And that is exactly what happened. And I'm so grateful for that encounter that I had um, with him Um, so the Lord it says in Psalm 34 verse 18 the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and he saves such as um, as have a contrite spirit so it is impossible for God to be far from those who has a broken heart and a contrite spirit now this testimony of mine and this encounter that I had with God really reminded me about the story of the prodigal sons. And I'm quickly going to run through it because, and I thought of, because there's actually just two things, one or two things that I really want to focus on with the story of the prodigal sons, but I have to just give you the full 
from the beginning. Okay, so this, we're going to start from Luke 15, verse 11. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give to me the portion of goods that, that falls to me. So he divided them to, um, his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and wasted his possessions with prodigal living. So you can clearly see that the devil knows exactly where to attack you. He knows where your identity lies, and he will do everything and anything that he can to dissociate you from your father. I'm speaking natural father, and I'm speaking father, the, for God the father. So as I'm sharing this with you, I want, to keep, want you to keep that in mind because a big part of this was, has to do with the forgiveness, that I, um, the forgiveness of my natural father. Okay. So understand also that the son was living with his father. What does father mean? Father's Abba, the source. He was living, he was in the house of his source. And he decided, you know what? I'm going to leave my source. I can do this life by my own. I want ownership. I want my own ministry. I want my own life. I want my own family. I'm going to up and leave. Okay. Um, we can go on from verse 14. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land and began uh, to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields of the swine. So the man gradually became degraded. Read. He sold his soul to the system, basically. Many of you sitting here, you sold your soul to the system of the world. He became a slave to the system because he was dis disconnected from his source. Okay. We can read on. Then he would gladly fill his, uh, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pots that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, I want you to highlight that. But when he came to himself, this is a very, very powerful revelation of what God put in you. He came to himself and he said, hold on, he came to himself. The Bible never says an angel appeared to him. The Bible never says the Holy Spirit spoke to him. It never says he went and he go, it went to pray about it. He said he came to himself. You have the power to come to yourself. You might not have the power to help yourself, but you have the power to recognize that you need help. So he came to himself and then he said, he said to who? Himself. Okay. How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? Can you see that hunger sometimes is a blessing? But sometimes I must be honest with you. I get frustrated and the reason why I get frustrated with this is because I really, really want to see everyone step into the call that they have for God. I want to see everyone flourish. I want to see everyone with joy and peace and everything that God has for him. But what is it going to take you? What is the next thing that needs to happen in your life for you to come to yourself? Are you waiting for another beloved one to pass away? Are you waiting for another month of hunger? Are you waiting? What is, what is it going to take for you to come to yourself and to realize that you need help and you cannot do this life alone. So the Bible says he came to himself. Okay, verse 18, from verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, he's still speaking to himself. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired uh, servants. Just say brokenness. 
everywhere you find the mercy of God, you will always find a broken and a contrite heart. It says, and he, ro- he arose and came to his father. So it is within your power to come to yourself. And it is within your power to take that first step that demonstrates brokenness. He arose. He took action. He got up. He didn't just sit there and mope about it. He got up. He decided to do something about this brokenness that he has. You know, when, when I sent my father that, that WhatsApp message, it is the same action that I took. I said, listen, I am broken. My life is falling apart. I know I've, I've, I've heard the teachings. I've heard the word. I've been in church for a while now, and I need to make right with my father. I have to. I came to myself, and I arose, and I reached out. But, um, but when he was still, okay, so this is verse 20, I think. We're on verse 20 now. But when he was still and a great way off, his father saw him and he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Can you see the way that this father honored his son for coming back? Mercy, it didn't say also, it, the Bible doesn't say he had mercy, he had compassion, because compassion, mercy flows from compassion. He had compassion. And the son said to him, now the son is speaking to his father. He said to him, Father, I've sinned against you and um, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Can you see that this man was really determined? How many of us has ever reached out to someone to make right with someone? And you have this, you know exactly what you're going to say when you see them, Okay. But then this person just welcomes you, just overwhelms you, but you didn't expect this, you know, forgiveness and this, and this welcome. And then you think, okay, now I don't have to say that again anymore, you know. You don't have to say it anymore because that, we all do that. Um, but this guy, this, this, I almost said this guy. <laughs> this son, this son said, I'm not going to be distracted by your honor. I am broken. I am broken and I have to let you know that I'm broken. That's why he actually said to his father what he wanted to say. But then the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Bring out a ring, um, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Can you see that the Bible says, he never said, listen, just go wash yourself first, go bath, you're a mess. He he didn't do that. There's, There's brokenness. He says, bring forth the best robe, put it on him. And put a ring, a ring is a symbol of authority. Put it on his hand. Put shoes on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and and kill it. We're going to have a feast. Why? For this, my son was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he's found. And they began to be merry. What is this death? I mean, he's talking to his son. It means that you can... Be dead without dying. Many of you sitting here, but you're dead inside. What does it mean to be dead inside? It means there's a separation. Once you are no longer connected to the source, you are dead. The word Abba means source. It means sustainer. It means protector. Um when you are no longer connected to that source, you are dead. My son was dead and now he's alive. What 
caused him to be alive. Um, the connection. He's now alive again. Okay. Verse 25. Now his oldest son was in the field. And he became... and. As he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So, he's, so he answered and said to his father, These Many years I have been serving with you. I've never transgressed, transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me uh, a young goat. Other translation says, uh, you never gave me, you never showed me mercy. Um, I might, um, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with harlots. You killed the fatted cow for him. So can you see that there were two sons who were dead, who was dead, actually? So there's two types of people there. So this younger brother, the mistake that he made, he said, I served you and I didn't transgress that is self-righteousness. So you can be connected to the source. You can be in the house. You can come and serve. You can be connected. You can be, you can pray. You can do anything. You can stand on your head. The condition is brokenness. You need brokenness. And he said to him, son, you are always with me. And, I, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again. And was lost and now is found. So both sons were dead. The one just acted out his rebellion by leaving. And the other one remained in the house but he wasn't broken. So the condition for com compassion and for mercy... Is not by your works. It's not serving for. It's not um, serving or by your works, because he did that for all the years. He did that. The condition for mercy and for compassion isn't flawlessness. The moment the younger son said, "I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, there's something that I've recognized. I am, I'm inadequate." I cannot do this life alone. I cannot help myself. The father then said, you have satisfied that condition. I, I've seen what I needed to see. I can see your brokenness. God is looking for brokenness. Now there's, there's a certain, what I'm trying, I really hope this comes across because what I'm trying to tell you is that there's something about father, the fatherhood of God that when you understand it, you can have access to dimensions and dimensions of possibilities and blessings and breakthrough. The word Abba, like I said before, means source. It is your, he's your sustainer, he's your provider, he's your defender. Now, the revelation of the fatherhood of God is the first key to stepping into dimensions of blessings, favor, and the goodness of God. When the youngest son got up and returned to his father. He didn't meet his father at the house. It said his father already saw him coming. And just go, to go back to my testimony with my, with my natural father, when I was on the phone call with him, he said, I can't remember the messages, but I, I can remember feeling in my heart I said, I knew you would always come back. I always knew you would come back. And it was always my prayer that you would come back and that you would, you would make right with me. So um, the father was already on his way to go meet with him, to say, I'm coming from, for you. Okay. 
perhaps even if the boy was delayed, the father would have gone, um, went to the pigs, to the swine to go get him and say, I'm here for you. God is not far away. He's waiting for you. He's looking at you and expecting you to come back. Why? Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. God is not ashamed of his vulnerability to declare his vulnerability for you. He's not ashamed. I've loved you with an ever, everlasting love and I've drawn you with my loving kindness. It is a revelation that you need to get. It is, and that revelation comes from a brokenness. That revelation comes from, I came to myself and I realized I need to get on my knees. I need to humble myself. I need to get rid of all this pride. I need to get rid of the possible rejection that I think I might, might receive. It is a place of brokenness. It is a revelation. The, un, the, the maker of the universe is your father. The giver of life is your father. The one who hands out favor is your father. Hey? The lifter of man is your father. The opener of doors is your father. Okay, It's not just God, because for some of you, God seems too far. Father, it's Abba. When you call him Abba, it's a relationship. It's not just God. If there are two people who are going to be blessed, I know I'm one of them because of Abba, because of Father. I have a Father. You know, um, it is like Pastor Stefan is a pastor, but he also has businesses. So let's, let's say Pastor Stefan's a CEO. You can explain to our children as much as you want what a good CEO he is. Okay, but the fact of the matter is the revelation that those children have is daddy. They don't care that he is a CEO or he is a pastor or he is this or he is that. He can be a pastor to you, to me. He can be a CEO to someone who wants a job. He can be a business owner to someone who wants a job or wants a solution to a problem. So... It is because, I, I, yeah. I hope this is going to sink in. It is because you've been approaching God. And that is why you are not receiving a response from the Father. God, I come to you. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is the revelation of fatherhood. The fatherhood of God that takes every fear away. I do not approach Abba with fear. I do not approach Abba with elegant words. How many of you have children? You know, <laughs> it's only moms that can understand, moms and dads that can understand what this child is actually saying to you. Okay? <laughs> You don't have to. With God, you don't have to. He knows your heart. He knows you. He created you in His image. Okay? He is not only you. It is not only you who loves God and who needs Him. Believe me, He needs you too. Why? He gave His only Son to redeem you. To say to you, come back. The extent... That's the extent of his love as Abba. He's a source, sustainer, defender. So if all he is to you is a giver, you are still in trouble. Because he needs to defend what he's given you. If, uh, if, if, if God is only, if he's only the, the opener of doors, you're still in trouble. He needs to, he needs to protect and defend what he's given you. Why? Because Abba defends me. There's no fear. Honestly, I can tell you today that the revelation and the Father of God 
the fatherhood of God has changed my life. It is where my life has, it is pinpointed to that moment where I changed, when my life was changed. And I can tell you, um, right after that, it was the 7th of November, 2018, when I sent him that message. The day after my 30th birthday. Then, the 7th of December, a month, exactly a month later, it was his birthday. We went out for his birthday. He met my son. Um, we had the most incredible time. You know what? It was so bad. He didn't even know I got married in the first place. He never even knew I, I had a son. Okay? It was that bad. <laughs> okay? Um, he met my son. He embraced my son just as he embraced me back. And until today, my father hasn't asked me anything about the past. It is as if he restored, and this is what God does. He restores time. The revelation of his fatherhood will give you rest and it will give you peace. How am I going to pay these bills at the end of the month? I know because I'm not an orphan. I'm no longer an orphan. Every time I lack, every time I want, every li a limitation that surrounds my life, stop looking at man. Stop shouting my landlord if you can't pay your rent. Sh stop shouting my boss. Shout Abba. Shout Father. You know, it's like um, many of us do this as well. I'm one of them. You see a child, beautiful shoes. You, you go up to the child, you say, oh, you've got beautiful shoes. Where did you buy it? Knowing it was that child cannot buy his own shoes. He can't, he, he can't afford it. Of course. Like, <laughs> of course you should know he, he couldn't afford it. So when you dress your children, it is not a reflection of your personal wealth. It is the reflection as a responsibility as of father, of Abba. Okay. Again, this mentality really changed my life. I walk around knowing God loves me. And He truly loves me. It's not just saying God loves me. I know He loves me. I walk around knowing that I have a father. I'm no longer an orphan. I truly have a father even though He resides in heaven. Okay. He is so committed to my life. So, I sleep like a baby. I have no problem sleeping. Because I know my father. I wake up with joy and with confidence, knowing the maker of this day is my Father. This day that He made comes from my Father, and it is His responsibility to keep my interest in heart, at heart, and make sure that everything goes according to what He wants for me. Um, I know that good things will happen in my life. And it's not just a confession. I know this. It is a knowing. It is a revelation. It is an encounter that you have. It is an understanding that you are no longer an orphan. Now, I want to... Something special happened also while I was preparing for this message. Um, I remember a prophecy that prophet gave me when I just joined the church. I was in this church, I think, for maybe two months, just over a month, maybe two months. And he gave me a prophecy. I stood right there. And it was, I will never forget it. And I, and I lost it. I've, I've lost it through, I wrote it down, but I lost the paper. I lost my phones. <laughs> um, and I took a chance and I asked Pastor David, Pastor David, I can give you, I can tell you it was this service, it happened in this service, please can you find it for me? And he found it. And again, again, God just spoke to me. When I listened to that, I knew I had to listen to that prophecy again. 
And I'm going to play that prophecy, okay? Because I want to show you that God has a promise for you. I want to show you what Father means. This prophecy is, I don't know, maybe it's because it's personal, it's for me, it's, my pers- it's just amazing. But as we're playing this prophecy, I want you to receive it. This word is not just for me, it is for anyone, it can be for anyone. And I want you to understand, this was exactly, I think it was to the month, unless it was in September of 2018, five years ago. Okay. In five years, most of you um, have seen me in the church, and you've seen me serving e-kids when I joined the church, but none of you really know my story. I don't think even the pastors really knew or knows a lot about me. Like I said, I don't, I'm not a really, I don't really speak much, but um, I just want to show you what God has done for my, in my life. And I want to extend it and I want to bless you with this word. I don't want to keep this word for myself because I know it's going to change your life as well. And if you can... If, it, if you can connect to this word, you can receive this word. Okay. So, um, I don't know if the media team is ready. Okay. There's a great call upon your life. Because I seem like a male figure that is standing that something is going to happen. But there's a great call. And this is the Lord I'm placing my hand upon your life. And I'm going to begin to lift you up. Because there's a creativity that needs to come out of you. And I will use you. I see words coming out of your mouth. I don't know if it's preaching or singing, but it's like God is going to use you in that area, mighty. To minister, even to women, you will see a power moving through you. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to begin to heal your heart where the enemy has desired to close down. And I'll be a father to you. And the spirit of rejection, adoption will come in like the spirit of adoption. The Bible says that, that the spirit of adoption has come upon us, that we will cry out, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. And the Lord is saying, I will raise you up, my daughter. And I'll place and I'll increase finances upon your life. Because even as the Spirit of the Lord has led you to this house, a DNA and a change is going to begin to take place. And identity and purpose is going to take place upon your life. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I'm going to begin to open up doors for you. I'm going to begin to open up areas and open up things, especially in the area of finances. And I'll lift you up in that area. But I'll use your mouth like a sword towards the enemy. And you'll speak like revelation and rhema that will come out. Because I've placed a treasure in you and you shall pray and have a spirit of intercession. And the spirit of prophecy will come upon your life. And you'll begin to speak for things in people's lives. And I'll cause you even to be like a Deborah that will have authority in her mouth. That like a sword, like a warrior, they'll be able to speak. And people will be able to feel encouraged. For the Spirit of the Lord is saying there's a gift that will be igniting this night. Even by the laying on of hands, even as you leave this place, the gift will be ignited in you that you've been called to do long before the foundations of this earth, long before you were even formed in your mother's womb. I have placed a gift on the inside of you that's going to begin to come out. The Lord is saying even in the area of relationships, I'm going to heal your heart. Where the enemy has brought in suggestions and things that's going to take place. I will reel your heart in the area of relationships and the curse that the enemy has desired so that has come through the family line to destroy marriage, to destroy things is not going to take place upon your life for I will touch your life and I even see like a ring on your hand that the enemy has tried to like, to like bring a curse upon, bring a, a problem in. That thing will be struck down this night and your future will be bright. For the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I even see, I even see like a family and a beautiful heart that is going to begin to change. For the Lord is saying, I will raise you up, but the treasure that is in you will begin to be revealed through the brokenness of the pain of yesterday and the rejection. As deep as the wounds have been when you were young, you'll be able to reach out and speak words of healing and love in Jesus' name. Let's give God a praise. If you receive that word, I want you to give him a shout of praise if you receive that word.
That's powerful. I still receive it. <laughs> I'll continue to receive it. <laughs> um, so it was actually, so that was in, um, that was five years ago. Thank you, Gail, for reminding me, but five, it's grace. Um, and uh, it was, that was, let's say September 2018. It was November 2018 that my relationship was restored. Not only with my natural father, but with God. And in that same month, I had the most incredible encounter with God in a dream. I was sitting, I was sitting there where you were sitting now. I was sitting there. And I remember it, it was someone else preaching. It wasn't prophet pre preaching. It was someone else preaching and the lights went off. It was actually my first December without my, having my son with me on Christmas. And I, I didn't have any family, so I was completely alone. And I was sitting there, someone else was preaching, and suddenly all the lights went off. It was completely dark. And the next moment, prophet sat ne next to me and he held my hand. And he's told me, um, everything is going to be okay. And I will never forget it. And I knew I was exactly where I'm supposed to be. And then, <laughs> uh, Pastor Stephen and I went on our first date. <laughs> <laughs> and God restored the original intent that he had for me in my marriage. I have a beautiful marriage. I have a beautiful husband. I have beautiful, I always wanted more children and I have beautiful children. Um, and God is still working with us. Many of you also know about um, Kian that I had to leave behind when we moved to Cape Town. But I'm not going to share that tonight or this morning. Um, God is still working on that testimony and he's... It's, 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 he's working with speed. <laughs> now, I want you to surrender for me. I want, not for me, for God. I want you to surrender. I want you to close your eyes. And I really want you to focus on Him. Not only God, but God as your Father. And Father, restore identities. Restore grace, restore purpose in this conference. Because many of us have settled into the identities and the names that are way beneath of what God has in store for us. We've called ourselves very little, little small names. And heaven is looking upon you and heaven is confused because heaven knows what God says about you. Heaven knows how he boasts about you before the angels. And today, God is going to restore. You will wake up and you will come, become, come to the reality of what God has called you to be. What your purpose is. When he restores, he restores you. Your time, it is as if it has never been lost. And let the anointing break every yoke upon our minds. Let it break every stronghold and let it every limitation. Let it break every limitation that, it, that has put us in a box. Father, we ask you for healing. Let healing take place. And we, Father, we thank you because restoration cannot happen if we cannot forgive and let go. And help us, Father, that when we cannot do it, help us, Father, to do it. Help us to let go and help us to forgive. You see, when you come to the fountain that never runs dry, your life becomes a, myst a, myst a mystery of wonder, a mysterious wonder, not only to yourself, but to people around you. 
So allow him to come and see what he can do. Now, I really want you to still keep your eyes closed. And I want you to still surrender, keep surrendering to God. Because many of you are relating to my testimony. Many of you have a pulling to reconnect to Abba. Some of you have never connected to Abba, Father. There's a pulling in your heart and in your spirit. There's a cry in your heart. There's a call for help. There's a desperation for surrender and to surrender your life to Jesus. And I'm telling you, Father is here. He has come for you. He is looking upon you and he's ready to receive you. If you have never surrendered your life to Jesus, let this be your moment to allow Father to take over. Let this be a I came to myself moment where you humble and surrender yourself to God and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. And I have to let you know that I am broken. I cannot do this life without you. I no longer want to be an orphan. I am a daughter. I'm highly favored and blessed. The Bible says that whoever will come to him, he will not cast away. Now, if this is you, I want you to raise your hand. Everyone, keep your eyes closed. I want you to raise your hand if this is you. I see that hand. I see them. Thank you. I see them. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I want you to say this prayer. Everyone, can, everyone can, can support them and say this prayer with them. If you're raising your hands, just stand up for me. I'm not going to call you to the front. You can just stand up. Everyone is keep your eyes closed. This is nothing to be ashamed about. In fact, just like the prodigal sons, how the father accepted him back they had a feast there's a feast in heaven happening right now in heaven because of you you can pray this after me say father this morning I have heard your word and I humble myself before you I ask you for mercy, for cleansing. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you've died for me and rose again. This morning, I receive eternal life. I receive abundance of grace. I declare that the power of condemnation, sin, and hell is broken over my life. And from today, I am born again. I am a child of God, and I walk in victory. Father, may you fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your divine call and purpose for my life. I de dedicate my life to serve you and to be faithful in everything, everything you entrust me with. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's give him a praise. You can do that better than that. Let's, let's show prophetess. 
we can praise. When she comes out, be ready to praise and to give him his glory. Okay. Um. Can we just give Jack, Pastor Jackie another just hand? What an honor to be in the service with her today. Ladies, you can take your seats. We got to get into another testimony video. You all know this, I want to say girl, but it's a lady here. It's Minette. <laughs> we got to get into her testimony video, and you got to see just how awesome how awesome God has done a work in her life. So you can please play that video, thank you. Hi everyone. Most of you have seen me doing announcements on stage in Kruger's door, or sometimes even in Centurion, or on the screens or on recordings of Encounter Church, but I didn't start out like that. You're looking at someone that used to be broken, that couldn't speak at all in front of people. Going to school, making friends, talking to anyone, was the worst thing that you could do to me. I remember as a child going to the restaurant and I have to order something and I used to whisper it to my mom because I'm just scared to talk to anyone. And then what you see now is the grace of God. What God has taken me from to where God has brought me is what God can do for you. In grade seven, I weighed 47. And for my length, that is very, very small. My teachers thought that something is severely wrong with me and they called me in and told my parents that uh, I might have bulimia and there's something wrong with me mentally and emotionally. And at that time, there was, I couldn't sleep, I had insomnia. And for those that has fear for dark corners or dark spaces, I know all about it, that's been my life. I would run to my room just to avoid looking at the other rooms down the hallway, jump on the bed, jump into the blankets and just close my eyes and wishing that it's the next day. I know everything about fear, the feeling of the darkness when it comes into your room. So at night I had insomnia and then it started going over to this depression where I felt it's all too much. Waking up was a struggle. It is dark. And because of that, all the stress and having to perform at school just to make grade seven to be able to go to high school, I didn't perform, I didn't eat, I didn't sleep. And so the, the teachers thought that there's something wrong with me and they started saying, but she must have the illness, there must be something wrong with her. I went home believing those thoughts about myself. Going over to high school, um, as you guys can see, uh, I picked up some weight and things started going well for me and I felt good about myself. But then the depression came back and I felt very alone and loneliness came in and suicidal thoughts became a daily pattern. And every day I would think this is too much, you know, the, the normal thoughts that all of us have. This is too much, I don't know how to cope. Does God see me? Does God believe in me and in my call? Do I have a calling on my life? And at the end of matric, I remember attempting suicide and it didn't work because by the grace of God, 12 o'clock at night, some of my friends rocked up at my door knocking and saying, listen, God told us to come here. And that is how God intervened in my life at that time. And I knew, okay, there's a God. I'm close to Him. He's close to me. He hears my heart. But as time went by, I had a lot of rejection, obviously, from the story that you guys have heard. I started going from one relationship to the other relationship, hoping that this guy will give me fulfillment and this relationship will make me feel beautiful and um, contradicting almost everything that God said about me. And eventually, I came to encounter church. And most of you know, for those who come in there the first time, you're like, what's going on here? What's happening in this place? And I sat right at the back thinking, as soon as the service is done, I'm out of here. I'm running for the door. No one must talk to me. No one must invite me over for a coffee. I don't want to know anything about anyone. And I came back the evening service, sitting at the back, obviously, because now that is a trend for me. And I said to God, you know, maybe you do believe in me. Maybe I do have a call. Maybe you have designed me some, for something great. I don't know, but you have to show me. You have to show me that I'm worth it. You have to show me that you believe in me and that I can be something in life and be free of obviously all the stuff that's been built up, the depression, the anxiety, the fear, the loneliness, the suicide. And I said to God, 
if you hear me, you will, this preacher that is preaching right now, at that time, I didn't know Prophet Leon, he will mention everything that I struggle with and pray for me. And at the end of the service, Prophet being a prophet, I remember he stood still and he was just looking and I'm like, okay, what's happening? And he said, I have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, I must pray for fear, anxiety, suicide, addiction. And immediately I felt like the Holy Spirit is going to kick me out of my chair right now if I don't go to the front myself. So I got up and as I'm standing up, I'm like, well, I'm up right now, so I might as well just go to the front. And I went to the front, um, not really knowing what to expect. But Prophet went and he laid hands on every person. Everyone fell over except me. And I thought, okay, maybe something's wrong with me as I think most of us think the first time when we come to Encounter Church. And I went home and I cried till 3 a.m. that morning as God was breaking down addiction, fear, anxiety, um, loss, pain, and all these things started coming off. And my parents didn't know what's going on with me. And I said to them, I believe that finally God is healing me. Amen. <laughs> Ladies, as you can see, we're getting into our prizes. We've got a lot of people to say thank you for to make today um, possible and to make it so special. Isn't it just beautiful here today? Amen. So first of all, we would just like to call up some of our main sponsors to make everything here today. There was a lot of people that sponsored a lot of gifts. I'm just going to call them out quickly. Vanessa, Michelle, Lily, <laughs> Daniela. And Sonalda, if you could please, four, please come to the front. These ladies have sponsored a great deal for making this conference possible and also the past conferences. So can't we just give them a hand and say thank you? We're going to give each of them just one minute to just quickly share a bit about their business and a bit about what they sponsored. So um, I'm sure most of you know, but um, I come from Diskem, and I run the fragrance category, the best category in the business. Um, and I hope that you're all going to enjoy your fragrances and just know that I've actually sampled you with a product that is not available in the stores as yet, and that is your MCM fragrance which is a prestige line. It's in line with the Louis Vuitton when it comes to the fashion. So I hope you enjoy and that you'll shop Diskem. Amen. <laughs> Hello, ladies. I hope you're all doing well. I'm very emotional. When Monette called me, she said, it's time. You need to say where you come from. This is hard. I'm very personal. Can I hold the mic, please, for a I got this, girls. I got this. This is tears of joy. In 2018, I'm going to tell you shortly because I can tell you a lot. I was diagnosed with nephotic syndrome in FSGS. 2019, stage five kidney failure. I was very, very career driven. I was a PA for nine directors. HR manager at Unitrons. So I had a lot of car dealerships underneath me. So 2019, they medically boarded me because of my stage five kidney failure. Obviously, I was in counter. 2020, prophet days whispered in my ear at women's conference, you will have a long, joyful life. I was so sick. I couldn't have shoes on my feet at conference because my feet were so swollen because of water. But I was here. 2021, I fasted. I prayed. They phoned me the day I broke my fast. The Friday. Mrs. Slater, come in. You're the last candidate to start your workup for your transplant. I found a donor. They said, no, she can't donate. 
But luckily, I'm married to my own superhero, my very own Superman. So only due to God's glory, on the 9th of December, 2023, I had my last session on a machine after having four heart attacks living on a machine. The 10th of December, 2023, my husband gave me a kidney. Today I'm standing in front of you. I'm healed. After my transplant, I had to go in isolation for four months. That was the hardest part. Missing conference, seeing all of you in church, watching live streams, and I'm not allowed to come to church. But you know what? It's worth it. It's time. I must come out of hiding. And you know what, ladies? This is awesome. Russell came home the one day after I was so career-driven. He said to me, what are you doing? I said, I'm healed. I'm healthy. I must go work. What's your problem? I'm busy with my CV. He wrote the amount on a little paper. He shoved it over to the table. He says, if you can find a job earning this salary, you can go work. You're so much worth, worth to me with all your experience and what you do for me. So yeah, I prayed. I prayed. I said, God, I'm healed. I'm not a housewife. I don't have kids. Please give me something. The next morning, I got a call. You know, I like gardening girls, but... I never thought I'll have my own nursery. Today, I'm the owner of Deco Plants Urban Nursery. Wait for it. My business got established in the same year, 2019, when I got medically boarded. My business was waiting for me. And you know what Prophet also whispered in my ear last year with Partners Retreat? He said to me, your healing lies in your kidney. And I'm healed. So we are so privileged to be in this house. And I would like to thank Prophet and Prophetess, all my pastors, my mentors, Dani Estelle, everyone that walked this road with me. Pastor Michelle, Pastor Taryn, everyone. You know who you are. I love you all. And girls, I hope you enjoy the candy frost, the popcorn, the juice. And I hope you love the flowers. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I don't know how I'm going to follow a testimony like that. Um, so I'm lucky enough to work with my husband. We have our own photography and videography company. We specialize in weddings, looking at you. <laughs> um, and we also do engagements, and we have a sister company that does um, more lifestyle shoots. So we do family shoots, couple shoots, engagements, um, those kind of things. So we sponsored photo shoots um, as prizes or gifts, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, you guys can go and have a look at our work, I almost forgot, at michaelhockeyproductions.com or on Facebook. Thank you. Good morning, Encounter. My name is Michelle. To all the beautiful ladies in pink, uh, first of all, I just want to thank Prophet Tess and Prophet Leon for the opportunity once again. And for all the pastors that's always been here for me, um, each and every one of you, for always speaking into my life and always for all the love and support. So just a bit of a background as well, the testimony how all of this started is two years ago, I fell very ill and the hospital bed became my second home. It all started with month in, month out, and those months unfortunately turned into weeks. In that time, I was very sick. I didn't have any much, anything left but hope. And as prophetess always says, but God, and everything in life happens for a reason. In that time, God answered all my prayers in his time that I've been praying since a little girl, and my dream came true. He uh, answered me, and he eventually he pushed me into my calling, everything I prayed for. Today, I'm standing here as I'm going to open my own clinic, and I am a full believer that women must be beautiful and healthy, and I am a sponsor. It's all about beauty and health, 
and um, I hope you be blessed. And women, we should always like look beautiful and take care of ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to try and be as quick as I can because, you know me, I can talk so long. I just want to say, Pastor Jackie, if you can hear me, that was a phenomenal word. It touched all of us. And my goodness, did she look beautiful. Woo! Hey? I want to tell you, I could remember sitting in the mother's room with Brian and Pastor Jackie. I don't know if I've ever said this to her. Brian was a baby, and I used to come here with Brian in his little chair, and I used to sit in there. And I remember one day, her walking past to go and get her son from the E-Kids. And I thought, why is no one snatching this woman up? She's so beautiful. <laughs> Needless to say, one of my friends did. <laughs> Lucky man. Lucky man. Okay, so I am going to call another um, bunch of our sponsors up, and we just want to thank you, all the ladies that stepped forward, and men, um, for stepping forward and making this the conference that it is today. It's exciting. It's nice. We've all had a little something, a little surprise. And we just want to call up Joey Opperman, Caroline Ferreira, Leanne Fisser, the, the, the cupcake lady, <laughs> Sheenan van Royen. If I mispronounce your name, please don't be offended. I try. Stacy Matadon. Michaela Boshoff, Alzabi, Alzabi Gerick, Jenna Heineke, Teresa van Ossebachen. <laughs> I looked at Manette at that point because, as she you knows, that'll more than likely be her surname. Jade Hayes, Ellie Boerter, Nikita Grove. And Elise van der Westezen. Thank you so much. These ladies, we just want to thank you for everything that you contributed. And we really, really, really appreciate you. Look at these pretty ladies in pink. Amen. I'm going to get to the next um, awards, if I can say. We've just chosen a few fruitful leaders. I know they're... Every one of you are fruitful leaders, but we just selected just three that we thought have really made a great impact this past year. So the first one is Megan. If you could please come forward. Megan has recently become a zone leader, and her zone is just multiplying. Tanisha Parrott, <laughs> she's right, yeah? <laughs> and for Pearl Joseph, I know I saw you earlier. <laughs> if you can please come forward from KDP. Auntie Pearl, yes. <laughs> And while they're still taking photos, I'm just going to do the next part for a few ladies that we also just wanted to say thank you to them for their serving. We can literally mention every single one of you because we know there's so many people that work behind the scene. But we would just like to say a special thank you to Sumeri. Where's Sumi? Silly Susie. <laughs> and also to Daniela Horn from KDP. I did see her. She's always by the e-cafe helping out <laughs> and running around. <laughs> There she is at the back. See, all the people that are serving always at the back. <laughs> and then we've got a few just random prizes for today, some spot prizes. So the first, we've got two special ladies here today. It's actually their birthdays. So <laughs> for Shanae and Paul Z, happy birthday, and you can come forward also. Come. And the next spot prize goes to, where's Mateo? A little pocket rocket. <laughs> Didn't she do an amazing job with her item? Yes. And our next spot prize is for our Auntie Esther. 
our prophetess's own mom. And we would just like to thank her because if it wasn't for her, our prophetess, our mama wouldn't be here. Amen. <laughs> Yes, I think we can do better. <laughs> and then, ladies, we've placed under three seats a sticker. So you can look under your seats, and if you've got a sticker, you are welcome to come forward and to get your prize. I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> the first person to shout out it. <laughs> it's a pink sticker. Pink circle. There's our first one. Yay! There's another one. <laughs> yes, come, Cherise. Okay. You can stand here. We'll be giving you your prizes. I get to have a chance to you guys. Hi. I'm just joking. <laughs> just one last thing that is very, very important. And I think it's high time we celebrate our pastors yeah. at Encounter Church. Can we just stand and give him a hand for all the phone calls, the praise, the time, the word, Pastor Michelle. <laughs> Pastor Jackie, they're just going to go fetch Pastor Jackie quickly. You guys can just, I'm going to stand here. I really feel privileged and honored to be the person to hand the gifts. But I think, you know, it is amazing to see how God is, like you guys heard last night, as God has raised up people to walk a road with us. Many of us, when we came here, we were broken. We had nowhere to go. We had no mentor. The, worst, the first thing I remember when I got here, and Pastor Maria unfortunately could not make it, but we celebrate her in her absence. Can we just give her a hand? Oh, come on. Let's just celebrate her as well. <laughs> but um, I remember the first time I came, I didn't know anything about church. It was one week in, and the Holy Spirit said, get a mentor, because you can't do this alone. You need a voice in your life and you need to know where to go. But if you can't see, how are you going to get there? And I went to pass me, I said, no, sell it, And she's like, and I said, would it be okay if you can walk a road with me? And she said, yeah, sure, just be at my house at three o'clock to pray. I was like, I'm there. But what I want to say today is that every single pastor, and I think many of you can testify of that, has spoken into my life and changed my life. And if it weren't for them, we would have no example. And a lot of other stuff not. <laughs> we would not know how to, not how to be a, a godly wife and those type of examples that they set for us. So today we just want to celebrate all of you and just really say thank you for everything that you do for each and every member, man, lady, young girl, Othani. <laughs> I should joke. But uh, we really love you guys and appreciate you so much. And prophetess asked specifically that we do this because she really loves you guys. And uh, she said, just say whatever you want, Minette, because I know whatever compliment you can give them comes straight out of her heart, because that is how much she loves them. And, and the support that they give her as well to be able to do what she does. So while we give them their prizes, can we just stand and give them a hand, please?
thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. And Minette, we didn't forget about you. Don't run away. <laughs> we just want to also just thank you, say the big thank you to Minette. Minette has been the one that's running around behind the scenes. Yes, I think we can start already giving her a big hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so Minette. We just want to say a big thank you for all that you do, all the love. I'm not looking at you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it gets emotional. If you ask women, are emotional. <laughs> but, you know, we love you. We appreciate you dearly. And just thank you for everything you do and for who you are. We know that Minette is someone that is aspiring. If there's a demon slayer or someone that she needs to get something done, we know that Minette has done it. There's so many times <laughs> I'm going to bust myself here. I see a demon and I'm like, and she'll say to me, I, I see what you did there. And I was like, I did it on purpose. Because I know and I believe in the power and the, the, the substance that she's done. There's someone that has served in the little and is now being trusted with the much. Amen. That's Manetti. Ladies, did you enjoy our first session? No. Did you enjoy the first session? Yes. I can guarantee you the next session is going to blow you away. Prophetess is going to come in, I want to say with a bag, <laughs> because that was what she does. She comes in and you can just expect, you can feel the atmosphere is loaded. There's going to be a time of impartation. There's going to be a time of activation. So make sure that you go and get, we've got to have a few snacks outside for you. So please get something for your tummy, but make sure you come in and get your seat. You do not want to miss session two. Amen? Amen. Thank you. If you would like to give it we're going to be ministry, back at... We have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to encounterchurch.co.za or leondupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being